Reducing the high spate of road traffic injuries and deaths is one primary focus of the Portia Simpson Miller led administration for fiscal year 2013 2014. Government's drive to improve road safety is important to the overall safety and security of all Jamaicans and is part of the wider plan to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Making the traffic environment safer, if achieved, will save the country on necessary expenses and impact positively on national development. Billions are expended on police resources to deter bad road behavior and to respond to and investigate cases after accidents. Billions are used to equip hospitals to handle emergency cases and dispense medication. And it costs insurance companies billions in payouts resulting from many avoidable mishaps. High accident rates also push up the cost of motor vehicle insurance, making it an economic burden for individuals. Lost productivity due to serious injuries and worse, loss of life from fatal crashes are immeasurable hindrances to personal and national development. The need for action in the area of road safety is most critical and crucial at this time as we only serve to hinder our growth and development with the spate of accidents on our streets. It is a daunting task, but government is finding success in a number of initiatives to make road safety a reality for all. Records from the Transport Ministry's Road Safety Unit showed fewer people dying from road crashes in 2012 than in 2011. The 256 fatalities, though still not acceptable, was a step in the right direction and resulted from targeted interventions. Education, information, engineering and traffic environment, enforcement and legislation, evaluation and emergency response. So it's a multiplicity of agencies, both non-governmental and governmental and private sector, who are involved in this tie to stem traffic fatalities. <laughs> Even as the nation missed its target to reduce road fatalities below 240 in 2013, this important goal remains a priority. All road users are called upon to exercise safety and obey the road traffic laws so as to further reduce crashes that can lead to injuries and death. The National Road Safety Council, the NRSC, and its partners are redoubling their efforts to achieve the below 240 target between 2013 and 2016. The strategy involves paying greater attention to groups at a higher risk of being killed on the roads, men, pedestrians, children and seniors, among others. The NRSC is also working with the police to better manage the traffic environment, hotspots and periods when fatal accidents are likely to occur. It's facilitating the safe movement of our people as they head to home, school, work or social engagements. Public awareness campaigns designed to influence behavioral change among road users are also being employed. They encourage citizens to walk, ride and drive for life. This initiative might not be a panacea for all the ills of our road situation. But if we can just inject road safety vaccines through the positive messages we intend to send, then we would go a far way at curbing the negative behavior out there. This is one time we don't want to laugh. Don't drink and drive. Cut your speed and save lives. Further afield, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller has called on world leaders to make road safety an integral part of the post-2015 Sustainable Development Goal Framework. Tackling road traffic injuries is an important and achievable objective which should be part of the agenda. The most effective way to reduce the appalling health burden of road traffic injuries is to integrate road safety securely within wider goals. The Transport Authority, responsible for regulating and monitoring public transportation, has been improving its structure, organization and service delivery. As of November 2013, prosecution resumed for the non-wearing of badges by all drivers and conductors of licensed public passenger vehicles. 
periodic road safety audits, which began in July on all new road projects, including Highway 2000, is also being done to ensure safety in the traffic environment. Road surfaces are being upgraded to improve the movement of disabled persons. Guardrails in several parishes have been replaced under the Inter-American Development Bank's Road Improvement Program, and a new road traffic bill is to be promulgated in Parliament to address modern road safety challenges. Among other things, it will limit the use of cell phones and other in-car devices while driving. And stiffer penalties for breaches of the road code. It will also speak to the certification of driving instructors who will then teach a standardized curriculum as part of a new graduated driver's licensing system. This will see drivers being licensed in phases. Making the traffic environment safe contributing to the overall safety and security of all Jamaicans, a strategic priority for the Portia Simpson Miller-led administration as it implements the 2013-2014 development plan.